Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, we've got an iPad Mini, plus we have a new version of the iPad that we already liked that was supposedly the best iPad already. The new iPad's here, the new iPad's here, plus record iPad sales, faster iPad chargers, and some real venom on stage towards Android. Claws All up. of that and faking it. Sometimes it's a good thing. Really? On iPad Today. I should try that. iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC from Citrix. Go to My PC connects you directly to your office Mac or PC from any other computer and from your iPad and iPhone too. Sign up for a 30 day free trial at gotomypc.com. Use the promo code iPad. And by Ford, featuring available sync. Now you can control your media player with simple voice commands. Enjoy your drive while you easily search and listen to your favorite songs. Check it out on the 2012 Ford Focus or at Ford.com slash technology. And by the all-new Slingbox, which can turn your mobile device into a television. With the new Slingbox, you can watch high-def TV on your smartphone, your laptop, or your tablet anywhere there's an internet connection. Check it out at Slingbox.com slash twit. That's the lyrics. What's that? Look at that. That's the autographed iPad. Our winner is going to get Karsten. Karsten, congratulations. The winner of yeah. an iPad. What did we give him? Did we give him the good stuff? I'm a little embarrassed to admit we gave him an iPad 3. Because when we when he won, <laughs> there was no iPad 4. This is embarrassing, but it's the way it is, and it's already we. I mean, we couldn't return it because it's, it's engraved. <laughs> it's, it's not only engraved. It says to iPad Today podcast winner, your name here. From your friends that go to meeting, and then then I wrote to Karsten, congratulations, Leo Laporte Twit, and you wrote congratulations, dude. It dude. looks like congratulations, duck. <laughs> Maybe he but Karsten's I a duck. promise you that I wrote congrats, dude. <laughs> it does look like duck. <laughs> Maybe he likes ducks. I don't know. It's a very nice iPad. It's uh, so we're you know you're still going to get it. It's your it's free. But it we raises the like issue it. of the day, which is Apple. You know, it's so funny because last month Apple announced the iPhone 5, and we thought, oh, that's going to be the big announcement of the fall. We knew there'd be an iPad, we thought there'd be an iPad mini announcement. Mm -hmm. Turns out the big announcement of the fall was this one, this October announcement. Not only new iPad mini, a new iPad replacing the original iPad. The, yeah, the iPad third 3. gen, you can't, I mean, can't buy there it. is no such thing anymore. And a whole bunch of new Macs, which is great for, I'm really happy because I'm a, I use Macs, I love Macs, and I'm glad to see that they're giving a little love. We got the iMac Mac. that's razor thin. Beautiful. So great, like just very, very beautiful. I Although saw it's a picture of it. sitting on a desk, so I feel like, yeah, I mean, the thin is only going to, it's really just cosmetic. It's not. You, you come in the room and it looks very thin, and then you look behind it and there's a big lump. It's kind of like me. But <laughs> yeah, at first glance, razor thin. <laughs> then you get a then little Then you see closer. the lump. But uh, but the but they all, but they uh, I thought when I first saw the pictures of that uh, before, as a rumor I thought oh that's a rendering it couldn't possibly look like that somebody faked it and it looks exactly like the fake rendering it it's really pretty amazing and new iPad minis but no Mac Pro but, um, but no you're glossing up new iPad minis the, but the big deal is and you called it Sarah Lane I'm going to give you credit. It is called the iPad Mini. Well, I mean, it's not. Some, somebody, I think we uh, somebody was watching our, our live coverage, which we uh, did Tuesday morning to cover the event, which Twitch was actually special 141. And they they provided two, streaming one. video, which is something that we haven't seen for a while, which is very helpful when you're covering these sorts of things live because we can actually watch the video without having to be there. But yeah, I had said beforehand, I think it's going to be called the iPad Mini. I just, I, I don't know. That just seems right. They've already got the Mac Mini. They don't have a problem with the word Mini. Right. And sure enough, that's what they ended up calling it. So not a lot of surprises. Although the Mini, I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it yet. And we're both going to get iPad Minis, obviously. I'm, I'm ordering one at midnight tonight. Yeah. For the purposes of this show, we now have to because the, you're, some of you are going to have Minis, and we want to make sure. So how are we going to do that? Will well. we do a mini segment? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about this. Let's do a mini segment. Now, I thought to myself, well, yeah, exactly. We can have. You a, should do it because within the iPad sh sh iPad Today show, you're, you're, we can have really like a mini of, minute. 
You're kind of mini. That's something mini specifically. I would. I'm the biggie, and you're the little. I'm just a little mini. Yeah. I'm a little mini. That's <laughs> it's perfect for me. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to hold this thing with one hand, which they keep saying is what's so great about it. Cause I have very small hands. But it does look like they're really now. Did MG play with it? Yes. It looks like, and I saw a picture of MG holding it. And it looks like he's really, like really. That's like that might there might be tendon damage there. Like he really, that guy's got a big hand. In fact, that's a Photoshop. Look at his. Look below the. It looks like there's a discontinuity between his hand well, and people, his fingers. People have a lot of differently sized hands. Okay, we can all agree. I on would have that. liked to have been at the casting session for that. Yeah, how big are your hands? Are they spidery? We don't want anything too flimsy. We so want did, a nice solid hand. MG's our our guy because he was there at the demo. Did he say it felt like it was hard to hold with one hand? No. And is that an issue? No. Well, I think the whole idea is. The, uh, the iPad mini is not ex extremely cheap. Uh, it's not competing uh, with other Android tablets in the seven inch uh, category in price. I'm gonna disagree with you on that. Okay, go for it. So it's 16 gigs mm -hmm. for, two f for 329. That's right. The 16 gig, wi -Fi only. 16 gig Wi-Fi only Nexus 7. Now, Google may change all this on Monday when they make new announcements, but right now the 16 gig Nexus 7, which they compared it to on stage, is $250, so it's $70 more, and you get a, ca a camera. There's no camera on the Nexus 7, so... And it starts at 16 gigs rather than 8. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just comparing 16 to 16. Okay. So for 70 bucks more, you get, it's an iPad, so you get the, mu the much larger app base. You get a camera. Um, I don't think that that's, I don't think, given Apple's normal, you know, like 50% bump, I don't think that that's so bad, 70 bucks more for that. Seems fine to me. Now, I have a feeling Google will drop the price of their Nexus 7, and then that might not be so competitive. But 329 is not a bad price. You think it's a bad price? It would no. be nice at 299 They could, frankly, 30 bucks. they should have done that. I think... Just because then you have a 2 at the beginning. I had kind of psyched myself into thinking that Apple was just going to surprise us all. And, I mean, I had predicted uh, 249 I think, is what I said. Yeah, you did. Or 229 even? 249, I think, is what yeah. I said. And I knew, like, that's crazy. It's 299 if I'm lucky. And it wasn't even 299, but that's just me being silly because Apple knows, like you said, they've got the, you know, the App Store is where iOS shines in, in almost every instance. Yes, if you're interested in beautiful products that don't feel plasticky and there's all this craftsmanship and Johnny Ive was responsible. And I mean, I, I buy into that, so I'm not saying that that's stupid. You've got that, but you've also got the iOS ecosystem. Right. And that's the most important part. And Apple knows that they're still on top. Craftsman chimp aside, I think the thing is people have invested, anybody watching this show has hundreds of dollars invested in iOS apps. Yes. So they're just naturally going to go if they want a small one. Now, I got to say, having used the Galaxy 7 when it first came out a year ago and I fell in love with that and I own the Nexus 7, I like 7 inches. I think it's a nice size. Seven, Actually, the Apple is 7.9 inches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a, a nice size. It's a little weird because unlike the Nexus 7, it's not 16. Nine. It's square. It's four by three, like our iPads are. It's also low resolution. I don't, you know, when they did the Nexus comparison, I thought it was very surprising. I've never seen Apple. do And they that went before. on and on. And they did. They spent a lot of time. They call, didn't say what it was, but it was obviously a Nexus Seven. Uh, they didn't mention the fact that the resolution is higher. It's twelve eighty by uh, eight hundred on the Nexus Seven, as compared to ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. You're going to get more dots on the screen. Um, I, this is my concern. This is exactly my concern. So first of all, I think that the iPad mini is not, I mean, they're not marketing it to us. They're marketing it to people who don't already have iPads who say, I love the idea of a smaller uh, version of the iPad. I also like the idea of a more attractive price. Oh, it's not really that much less, uh, uh, less expensive. That's my point. It's only 70 bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's, eh. but, uh, but once you have it, okay, maybe because it's smaller, I will notice the the, the non-addition of Retina less? I don't know. I mean, I, I would from never go back to a non-Retina iPad at this point because it truly is so much better. But maybe in a smaller package, that will bother me less. But it also runs all of the same apps, which is great because developers don't have to do anything. Right. But it's like, why would I use the Mini unless for some well, reason... It's, it's a little more compact, maybe. The, the, the uh, interesting thing, people, people who saw it, and again, we haven't so seen heavy. it. It's we'll see it heavy. a week from tomorrow. But the people who did see it at the demo room said you you wouldn't know it wasn't retina because of the smaller screen yeah. it feels it's like it's ide identical. yeah i mean if, if if i can be fooled into it looking just as good yeah i guess i don't care that it's not retina but 
I feel like I'll be able to tell the difference. Yeah. Eh, they, you know, the apps are just a little bit smaller, so there's that. Uh, James, actually, on the subject of pricing, he wrote to us, price is way too high for old CPU and no retina. $250 would be a no-brainer. $299 would have been a maybe, but $329 is too much for too little. Prices of Android devices continue to plummet. I don't know if they're plummeting. I really think that this is going to hurt Apple as Android continues to sell under $199. More Apple users will slowly adopt Android tablets and eventually buy Android phones. Android is eating Apple from the bottom up. Well, I don't think Apple cares Apple about care. bottom of the market. No. Apple's like, no, we're... we're. Although, they might care. You know, the fact that they did that side by side means they, they care a little bit. They do care. The other thing they didn't mention is the Nexus 7 has GPS. The Wi-Fi iPad mini does not. It will have Wi-Fi only. This is how the Wi-Fi regular work. iPad does not either, though. Right. So it's not as if they've taken away a oh, feature. Oh no, 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 no! I'm not saying only. that. I'm just saying if if you want to compare them side GPS. by side. Although, see, a Wi-Fi only device, GPS doesn't seem as important um, because uh, you know, unless you have Wi-Fi in your car, I guess you might. So we have to talk about this whole full-size iPad fourth gen thing. This that, is a little upsetting. Uh, I would like I would like you to tell me why I should be upset about this because we've talked on a few of our Twitch shows this week about customers feeling really burned, like Apple, how could you? And to that I say, how could they what make a product better? Are they supposed to so sit? quickly? But 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 that makes no sense either. So Apple should so that no one gets their feelings hurt. Everybody does sit that. on new technology. Yeah. So that. Do you not think they did that with the iPhone? Of course they do. Every year, once a year. So that's the problem. I is don't Apple, know. I don't know if they're ready more than once and, a year for the iPhone cycle. And Samsung obviously doesn't. But but uh, but but Apple has, and they've kind of set that expectation. We're going to do an iPad a year. We're going to do an iPhone a year. That's that's the reason. And so it's only been seven months, right? Yes. So that's it's five months quicker. And I think that, you know, that was one thing Apple people felt a little bit safer about is that, oh, I'm not going to feel obsolete so quickly. Now, are you obsolete? No. What's the difference? It's just faster, right? That's the big difference. Well, and it's got a lightning connector, which right. probably doesn't affect you that much yet because we're still in the beginning days of lightning connectors. I guess it's convenient if you've got a bunch already for your new iPhone 5. But you might even not even have an iPhone 5, so maybe it doesn't matter. I just feel like... The iPad, let's just start calling it the iPad 3 now so that we don't get too confused. Although the new iPad is called the iPad 4, so I guess we're back to numbering uh, conventions. But this guy, I've got, what, 400 apps on this thing? I don't know, when last we checked, I mean, it is absolutely pummeled with apps. And I don't really get glitches or slowdowns. I don't feel like it's sluggish. That's the whole thing with people saying, it's not just the lightning connector, now the new iPad's got the A6X, it's twice as fast. That's not true. It's you know, not twice as fast. It's funny that you should say that because I didn't feel like it was slow either. But then people were saying, I can't remember who said it. it was somebody on Mac Break Weekly, maybe Renee Ritchie on Mac Break Weekly, that in fact this iPad third generation was a little slow because it was pushing so many pixels with the retina display. Yeah. And one of the reasons Apple might have refreshed so quickly is because they wanted to get back to the previous performance of the iPad 2. Uh, and in order to push that many pixels, they needed to put the new 6x processor. And that, I mean, then that would make sense. Um, I, th I think they wanted to get lightning out as quickly as they could. I think that that's one problem to have some. Yeah, because they want to convert everything right. over to lightning. And as long as they're doing it to it, remember, the iPhone 5 was much faster than the iPad third generation, so they were able to leap ahead using the iPhone 5's uh, A6. I guess, you know, I, you're right, I can't complain. If they've got the technology, they should put it out. I just feel like, I think, I think it was Renee Ritchie, actually, he said something funny on Twitter, I retweeted it, and he said, unless somebody came into your home and, like, took a hammer to your iPad 3, I don't see what you're upset about. I mean, you still have a product, and they announce another product that you're not required to buy, and there's nothing wrong with your product. <laughs> and Karsten knows that for a fact. He is stoked. iPad 3. By the way, Car I'm sorry, Carson. That's, by the way, that's why I'm upset. <laughs> Chan Skinner on Twitter pointed out you can get a refurbished iPad third gen, so they're not actually gone well, uh, from until Apple they directly get itself. Until they get rid of the refurbs. Well, okay. They're not. It's not on the. It's not on the price list anymore. It's not something they want to sell. And that's. But I've, they are selling. I mean, they're selling it's them. It's rare. This is. It's rare that Apple will take a product off the uh, uh, off the market so quickly. Seven months from beginning to end for the iPad third generation. That's quick. You know, Market Watch had a funny article that iPad resales um, <laughs> from the announcement to this morning jumped 700%. A lot of people selling their really? iPad third gens. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, which that's mean, good for Gazelle. Which means, good which for means gazelle. are you selling them because you're mad? Probably not. You're selling them because you're either getting that fourth gen you want or the you're going one. mini. Yeah. You're, you're, you're getting something you think, new. All right, now, that's an interesting question. Will people go mini? I don't know. That's a really good question. I like my full iPad. There's no way I'm getting rid of this thing because I love it. I don't feel like it's not portable. I don't feel like it's too heavy to hold when I'm reading. I'm not quite sure why people feel that way. I mean, you compare it to the first gen, it's like way thinner and so lighter. If we do mini segments, what are they going to be about? What, I mean, the apps will be the same, right? That's the thing. So I'm not sure if we want to have a mini minute because what's really going to be different about the mini, it's just going to be a smaller version. You don't think the mini app's designed for the mini? No. Why should there be? That, it, I mean, that they're the same thing. It does mean As that a if... developer, you create something that's designed for the mini, it's just going to really look nice. And you'd still have to design for the retina display because you wouldn't want it to look like crap on the full size. So people are still going to design for retina. If you design I for retina, they? but you always have to put the 1024 by 768 stuff in there just so that if you, somebody downloads yeah. the mini that they'll look. So I guess there's a little bit more work involved. You have to, it keeps 1024 by 768 alive, whereas it probably wouldn't. I know Apple still sells the iPad 2. In fact, to this day, they sell the iPad 2, mm -hmm. but, um, which is 1024 by 768. So I don't know. Tim Cook, uh, interesting uh, stat, uh, 100 million iPads sold in two and a half years. I know you asked me, does that seem like a lot? Seems like a lot to me. I don't know. I, all we hear about is how well the iPads sell every time there's a new 100 iPad. 100 million. 100 million. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's, it's just a big number. You can number. get them all over the world now. Also, Apple has confirmed that the 12-watt uh, new adapter like will that. charge iPads faster than the previous 10-watt. But that's always the case. Yeah, I mean, there's more watts. I In would fact, hope that would In fact, that work. is a little pro tip for anybody. You know, you probably have a, a bunch of chargers, not lightning chargers yet, but eventually you'll have a bunch of lightning chargers lying around. Um, or if you have chargers for other devices, they always on the charger will say uh, how many volts, usually five volts, and then, and this is important, how many amps. And uh, the, that was what was unique about the iPad charger. It was five volts times two amps, or 10 watts. Mm -hmm. And most chargers are point. 0.5 amps. They're much lower. And the more amps, the faster it charges, the more force the electrons are coming at you. So it's always good to have more. I mean, presuming that you don't blow something out, but you won't. The, the adapters handle that fine. So you, I guess they're going to do, I don't know what they're going to do. Is it, is it five volts? It probably is still five volts and it's just more amps. I don't know. What would be that? 2.3? 2. 2. 2. What would it be? 2.387? Nine six four three one five three oh nine. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But what I do know is that the one thing that I think is lacking is nice quick charging with my iPad, which right. is why I always charge it overnight because it's like right. I don't so, really need eight hours know. to charge my iPad. But it you can't I, just charge it in an hour and then get out of get out of the house. Two more watts will make that. It's twenty percent faster. It can't be that much more fast. Now, by the way, they also point out you can use it with your iPhone or any other uh, Apple Lightning device. So, which is the iPhone. So uh, <laughs> and it will, it will charge the iPhone the faster, too. All the other Lightning devices, yeah. like the iPhone 5. Yeah. You know, you mentioned 4 by 3, the ratio um, for the iPad mini, and which is different now than the iPhone 5, which is true 16, 16 by 9. 9. But I do think that for uh, landscape display, especially when you're reading articles, 16 by 9 is weird on a tablet. It is weird. Because it's, it's very wide and very short. And that's what Apple was showing when they showed... In, in in landscape mode, the Guggenheim web page on the Nexus 7 and on the iPad. Right. You see more of it. You it looks more. a little bit more like a page. Just because, but it's it's a little dis deceptive because it's not more pixels on that screen. It's just it's just a different aspect ratio, so you see more down. Sure. Yeah. They they something. they believe in their and in, in. Well, their I don't know if they view. even believe in it. I think they're just saying, this is what we this is what we look like. Yeah. <laughs> they're looking for ways to look better. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be compelling to consumers or not. We'll see. The iPad Mini. Yeah. I I don't know. I I mean yes. I think it's going to be compelling. I think they're going to sell really well. Holiday season's coming up and everything. Because I don't. it's going to be. You don't. No. You don't think this is going to be a high seller. I think people will go in. They'll look at it and they'll end up buying the iPad fourth generation it's, because it's because it's not that much more. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what you said. Well, you know, you've got that messenger bag. It's only got so much space. You can just buy another messenger bag, I guess for the bigger iPad. Hey, so for all the links to uh, all the stuff that we mentioned, we mentioned uh, quite a few articles and all sorts of stuff that's, uh, that's, that's going on in Apple world, please do visit us at twit.tv slash IPT. That is our show. Uh, 
ground now, I wouldn't want to say ground zero. It's our show <laughs> spaceship of knowledge. The mothership. Yeah, the mothership. It's I the think mothership. That's, that's kind of where I was going. I knew that. Um, yeah, last the week, hell? Leo, you left me in, in the lurch, so Scott Johnson and I had a really good oh, show. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We wore our app what caps. Did, what does he wear? He was wearing a weird app cap that uh, was made for him. I think it's a World of Warcraft thing. Uh, so yeah, I didn't get it. I just smiled politely. I love Scott. Yeah, no, he was he was great. We had a lot of fun. We talked about some games and some crazy stuff. Um, but th this is uh, at our website is where you can watch old episodes, anything that you might have missed. You get links to everything that we talk about, all the apps that we talk about as well. Well, he came with his own app cap. That, I'm impressed. Well, that's the requirement. You can't just be a guest host on iPad Today and say, oh, I don't want to participate in the hat portion of the show. You'd be kicked right right out the door. He's wearing an or cat. Yeah, something like that. It's one of those things. <laughs> right. No, Scott's, aw Scott's awesome. So we had a good time, but we missed you. Well, I missed you. Well, I missed you more. But uh, I saw reminder. Madonna. <laughs> Whatever. I think that uh, an episode like of My Day would be more right fun. Uh, Madonna is 90 years old. Please don't say that she looks like me. <laughs> she looks like an old She is. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Well, she's got scary arms, you know? No, she doesn't. Everybody says that. Wait till she you get does. old. Then you'll have scary arms, too. No, no, no. She, it's not scary arms because she's old. She's scary arms because she's bench pressing like 300 pounds. Yeah, she stopped doing that. She looked more normal. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I actually don't know what I'm talking about. She looked about. great. No, people say that. Scary arms. I, I didn't notice. Okay. Well, all right. She looked great. Quick reminder, anybody who's watching live knows we're recording a little bit early on this episode, so thanks to everybody who um, is joining us a little bit earlier than usual. But normally we record iPad today, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. Tune in. It's fun to watch live. But if you can't watch us live, you can always subscribe to the show, and all of our episodes are on our website, like I said, to watch on demand at your leisure. She was doing the same thing with the hair that you're doing, where she clipped it back. Really? Yeah. My, this is, look at this. This is not good. <laughs> I didn't. It's cute. It's, wait, it's early it. in the morning. We you were doing what? the show a little earlier. When because you got to be on camera five days a week, you stop caring about the little things. You do, don't you? Yeah. You notice that. Especially when you don't have a makeup department. Right. Because they care about the little things. That's or their wardrobe. Job. Nobody's yeah. paying me to brush my hair. Nope. So mm -mm. you're lucky if I do. It's funny because I don't really, it's, I don't know how this became TV. It really wasn't, <laughs> it was a podcast. I don't know what happened. If you'd like to, we could try to just, just go take, back to turn audio. Turn off the cameras. Yeah, for iPads and apps, that would be awesome. What a compelling show. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Now, don't good. we sound handsome Finally, and beautiful? Finally, I can let out my stomach. Oh. <laughs> let's just, let's just <laughs> ease into these chairs, huh? Do not adjust your set. We just turn the lights out. This show today brought to you by our friends at Go to My PC. Citrix does such a great solution. Uh, they invented remote access. Uh, literally, uh, back in the, w the days of Windows NT, Citrix created, uh, it, was, it was Ed Iacobucci of Citrix who created remote desktop. That's what the Microsoft licensed from Citrix. And if you're in an enterprise, you know the name Citrix. But they make a great product for those of us who don't have IT departments. Or even if you do, you just don't want to bother them. Let them stay in their little cave playing Halo 4, it's okay, because we've got go to my PC. Remote access for the rest of us. Access your Mac or your PC anywhere, even from your iPad, even from your iPhone. It is the wildest thing to be running a Windows PC from your iPhone. And you can, the mouse, the keyboard, everything. It's so cool, and of course, on a Retina iPad, you have more resolution than most PCs, so you're really, you're rocking it. You're doing so great. You can save and uh, uh, save files. You can send and receive email. You can run any program. You can access all your uh, network stuff. It's the missing link that turns your mobile device, including your iPhone, your iPad. It works with the Kindle Fire, the Android tablet. Go to my PC from Citrix. Access everything on your Mac at work from anywhere. And this means you can head on out. Go home on Fridays. You can travel. You can see the world. And you can still be at your PC at work or your Mac. Try it free for 30 days right now. Visit gotomypc.com. You see that try it free button and you see there in the promo code, I want you to use the word iPad. That's all, just iPad and we'll get credit for it. Click continue and you will be trying it free for 30 days. Remote access done right. There are, I know there are other companies that do this. I know you even comes with Windows, but uh, I guess Mac has some remote access. Yeah, share my Mac. This is fast, so much better. NAT traversal means you don't have to worry about punching hole in firewalls. 128-bit SSL means it's totally secure. Go to mypc.com. Use the promo code IPAD. Hey, so Leo, I thought that you'd be excited about the whole Borderlands Legends coming to the iPad on Halloween.
You love games. It's an adventure game. Yes. Role playing game. Yes. I do. I am actually it's very Gearbox excited about software that. made. Yeah. Um, they Is, they announced that the the game was going to be available on October thirty first on Twitter. Um, we've Halloween. seen we've seen some yeah uh, yeah yes uh, we've seen some some gameplay footage because Entertainment Weekly uh, got an advanced copy so they wrote about it a little bit and we know that it will be uh, so that's you know what one week from when is what day is it gosh Halloween's next week holy it's crap next week so four ninety nine for the iPhone iPhone users can 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 play it as well and then six ninety nine on the iPad do you play that Chad. Uh, the the PC game, yes. You not, do. I, I mean, obviously, I haven't played this one because it's not out yet. You know, I think I totally thought you were gonna freak out nah. and pee your pants about this. And I you're did like, pee my pants, eh, but that's something. It's else. an adventure game. So it's. Uh, <laughs> it it Where remember. It a lot of people. <laughs> remember remember how I said that I like games that use the touch interface. Yes. This is the kind of game that touch does does pretty well. Yeah. You don't use a joystick. You normally would use a keyboard and a mouse, but I think this will be good on touch. I'll have to see. I'll have to see. I'm waiting for, like, StarCraft. Wouldn't that be great? World of Warcraft. Some of those other, you know, kind of role-playing games. It'd be fun to get them on the iPad. I think they'd work well. Mm -hmm. But this is a start. Yeah, sure. Legends is a start. So if you're excited about it, hey, that's in less than a week from now. Also, we we have we have a death. A death in the family. News.me is shutting little, down its apps. I'm Pulling them this. from the App Store. Because of Twitter. Well... I don't know. I think yes. that's one version of the story. That's their version. There's that. That's their version. Okay, so a little a, a little background. BetaWorks runs uh, News.me. BetaWorks is also the company that bought Dig, right. by the way. Right. They say because of Twitter changing its API third-party apps policies that there was enough that they would have to change about the way News.me works that their developers just are stretched too thin and they don't want to put that kind of effort into something that is uh, that could change again on a dime, basically. Like, the Twitter platform is too volatile. I don't blame them. We can't do it. But if news.me was a huge hit and they had enough people using it on a regular basis, I think that they would find that it was worth it, don't so you? So maybe that's what's going on. I think there's probably a little bit of a, hey, we had some early adoption. I know people love it. You know, someone was talking about Pulse uh, versus Flipboard earlier in the show. News Me is a great way. I've got it, I've got it open here. It's my little relic, my little dinosaur app. Um, which now, of if course you've got is it, will it still work? Or? Yeah, yeah. I think my I get the news. A out of focus I don't here. use the uh, iPad app. I do get it in my email, though, which is nice. So I get an email every uh, morning about what my friends have tweeted about or Facebooked about, or I guess now it'll be digged about. Yeah. Um, and it, look, it's social. I think social the... news is is in many ways the future of news. We we had uh, Jonathan Abrams, the founder of. He says hi, by the way. Founder of Friendster. Remember interviewing him I on do, the Screensavers way yeah. back when? Absolutely. His new social news play is called Nuzzle. It's still in private beta, but it's very good. But there's Prismatic. There's Nuzzle. There's Bottlenose. There's News. Me. Uh, even going back four years to social media. Um, there have been a lot of social news plays. And the idea is kind of taking Dig to the next level. Instead of having a dedicated place where people have to go and vote up and down, it monitors Twitter and Facebook. Eliminating Twitter kind of, to me, brings you back to the days of Dig where you had to go and find, you know, your friends had to vote on Dig. Well, it's true, especially because, you know how every, every app that we talk about is always like, and there's social functionality, too. You can send this to your friends on Twitter or Facebook. I mean, you're lucky if you get anything besides those two. Right. So you take Twitter out of the equation, and all of a sudden it's like social sharing on Facebook only? I and mean, I then you have to get creative. On Facebook, people are not so hard news focused. They share right. the, you know, the gossip. They share the funny photos. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the animals being uh, being rude and things like that. Things and that I find on BuzzFeed, I'm always, Buzz sending, I'm always sending to Facebook it's rather Buzzfeed. than Twitter. And Twitter tends to be, yeah. at least the people I follow, I follow a lot of hard news people on sure. Twitter. I get great stuff out of Twitter. So I, it means news.me is going to be less useful to me, I think. Well, I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to get rid of news.me. And but the app will still work. It, the app still, yeah. The app it still just won't have Twitter on it. It's not, yeah, it's not going to disappear off of my system, think, but it's not going to be updated. I think you nailed it. I think it wasn't Twitter. So Twitter's a good excuse. I, I think, think it is, right. too. Yeah. Yeah. They just weren't. I mean, I'm not the attraction. only one who feels that way. I didn't just, you know. You didn't make that up? Well, I mean, I, that's how I feel. I think I, you're right, though. I just feel like, in general, you hear about apps and uh, companies that make the apps winding down development because you know the team is stretched too thin, or you know we we've got this other product and we really need to move in a different direction, and that's always sort of a polite way of saying we weren't really that happy with the engagement uh, that people had with this product because if engagement's through the roof, then you do what you're doing well. Right. That's 
the way that it, that's just business. Right. All right, so we've got to ask Leo here. We haven't had a direct, direct Leo answer this question um, in a few weeks now. This one comes from Ron in Texas. Back to the Boxers. iPad. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ask the question. Well, not always. <laughs> I mean, what if you're running? Okay. Ron in Texas asks, yes. I would love a final answer to this question. The iPad 2 has the A5 processor. So does the iPad mini. Yet the mini gets Siri. And the iPad 2 does not. Mm -hmm. I thought the processor was the issue. Mm -mm. I was one of those people who didn't get the upgrade. Apparently a good move. Now if I upgrade, I get a better iPad. Anyway, it's been bugging me that every iOS device released this year has access to Siri, even the iPod Touch. What's up? Well, it's clearly not processor uh, dependent. And not, that doesn't surprise me because Siri's not doing that much stuff locally. Siri but without an internet connection doesn't do anything. It's all going up to the server. And I think really what's going on is that Apple is slowly rolling out Siri. They don't want to roll it out to all their devices or desktops either. I mean, a desktop has more than enough processor power to do Siri. Mm -hmm. They haven't rolled it out there either. And I think it's mostly because they, they want to control the number of users. As you know, uh, Siri often says, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Network's too busy. Um, and so I think that's all it is. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's another way Apple gets you to buy new equipment, right? Right. We had we had predicted in the past maybe it's a processor thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, but maybe we had, but uh, but it's clearly not. I I guess it might be RAM. Might be amount of memory. Apple has not disclosed how much memory's in the Mini. I would guess it's not more than five twelve, but. Maybe it is. I, I, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, Ron, I don't use Siri that often. <laughs> you're not missing that much. No, you're not. You're really not. I, I use it. I do use it. But you know what I use? I use it for things like, um, uh, you know, like I have like my car dealership programmed into my contacts. So I'll say like, call Planet Sob. You know, well, that's when useful. I'm when yeah, that, that sort of thing. Like, it's good for shortcuts, but it's not like I'm asking Siri, you know, the answer to the universe. And don't you do shopping lists too? Like, add guacamole to my shopping list. Yeah, if I'm in the car and I know I can't yeah. type something and I just really need to put it down somewhere, I'll use Siri for that. That works nicely, especially now that you could sync the shopping list to the desktop and everything. It's a part of reminders. Yeah. So you make a shopping list in reminders. Right. And then you can say, add avocados to shopping list, and Siri will do it on your phone and sync it to your desktop. And that's nice. I mean, that's very handy. Yeah, the syncing capability is great. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about apps that do a lot of that. But, Siri, but, but you're right. Siri, built right into iOS. The other thing I like about Siri is dictation. I dictate uh, on the phone. I dictate a lot. Well, that's very interesting that you say that because we got a bit of a duh tip from Barry who says, on a previous show, you suggested we could change the Siri's voice by setting it to another country. I mean, at least in English, you've got a variety mm -hmm. of Australian accents. or Great Britain. Yeah. yeah. He says, I liked the UK male voice, so I set it to that. Soon after, I noticed that Siri had a difficult time understanding me. For example, when I asked to add something to my shopping list, no matter how clearly I enunciated it, it thought I meant edit instead of add. It's happened with many other words as well. Finally, I wondered if Siri also expected me to have a British accent when speaking to it, and I think it did. I think so. I set Siri back to using US English, and then it started understanding me again. So you just have to speak in an English accent. That's but Add isn't that avocado, isn't that funny? Here's people saying, "Oh, I, I kind of like this Siri shopping. voice, so I'll do yes. this." But it's the, the your dictation has to match, or Siri's like, "Where are you from? I do not know well, what you're imagine saying." Imagine if it didn't do that, and you said and you were said it to the UK. You were in the UK, right? And it's made you talk like this, right? No, that, that makes wouldn't perfect be sense. right. <laughs> so if you're the kind of person who is good with accents, then this could be a fun test. I <laughs> dictate something with a South African good English day, Siri. Put another that's not an accent. I'm very good. Well, that's <laughs> wow. You're that's a natural. Terrible. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I think that they probably hate things like oh, I know. shrimp on the Barbie, Good Day Mate, yeah. Fosters. But I, What's another thing that... No walking furries. That's what they say. I don't know what it means. Yes, you do. I got, strike when, in reverse. When I was, uh, when I was in Australia, yes. they taught me some Australian... See, I can't quite stay in the Australian accent, but they taught me some Australianisms, and there are some. There are quite a few. So there, there is they a do, lot of they, slang. Oh, yeah. They've, yeah. they've kind of got their own the thing The Foster's going. ads are... First of all, Australians don't even drink Foster's. So no, those... I, throw that out. The oh, I know. Yeah. I know. That's just yeah. something that comes to mind. But they do say when you think things of like fair Stereotypical Australian. And good day and mate. They say, say, how you going? How you going? Good day, mate. Arr, nar. I like it. Yeah, that's just fun. I it's just love fun. It. I'm going you know? I'm to be there in two weeks. I'm going to... Can we talk about this really quickly? Leo's leaving the show for three weeks. 
One of the weeks is actually going to be Thanksgiving, so it's like we're all going to be I'll gone. be back that day. Well, we're not doing a show, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'll be here me. sitting here. You won't be. Waiting for you. No, you're going to be eating tryptophan, <laughs> sleeping. I'll be sleeping because I, I arrived the day before and I'll be very jealous. You, you can sure. eat your turkey dinner and fall asleep <laughs> into some stuffing, just like <laughs> last year. Uh, okay, do we want to talk about uh, our wonderful friends at Ford? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Who, do you have a guest host uh, lined up yet? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, the first week you're gone, Eileen Rivera. Great. Uh, wonderful a co-host of All About Android, but iPad lover. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have That's like a bonding session. That'll be interesting. And then the week after that, Shannon Morse, new uh, Twit loves, employee. Yeah. yeah, that's great. She, she loves her iPad some, too. She, oh, good. Well, Absolutely. Great. That'll be fantastic. even though she's kind of hackery and open source, she loves her iPad and isn't afraid to say so. So it's gonna be a chick month. It's gonna be awesome. Awesome. That, and you won't want me back, probably, when I get back. And so we just won't do a Thanksgiving episode. It'll just be dark. I wanted to, and Lisa was like, can you please just take the day off? Well, Gosh. because it's not just you. We have to have editors. I we have know. to have board ops. We but have to have people. I don't like taking time I don't off. either. You should see Steve Gibson. His steam comes out of his ears when he has to take a day off. Really? He's only taken one day off in seven years. Oh. One show. Well, that's missed. a little much. We, and we had to make him do it. I mean, I like vacation as much as the next guy. I just feel like I can, we can pre-shoot so we don't actually have to miss anything. We shouldn't it's miss a show. It's you guys that I don't want. We shouldn't miss a I show. I just don't want you to say, hey, I miss you this week. I want to give know. you an episode. I know, it's not right. It's just, I'm just so generous. I know. Can you talk about Ford? Yeah. Or are we just going to keep talking about scheduling stuff? I, I, I'm thinking of trading. Would you like the Mustang? Yeah. What's I the saw that your car mileage? was in the shop again. Oh, my gosh. My car is going... Down the I think you need a Ford. So what I, what I want to get is the new, and this would be perfect for you, is the Fusion uh, Energy. It's a plug-in hybrid. See, this is what so I want. As this you're, is what as I want. As you're bopping around town, you're just on battery. Yeah. But then when you have to come up here, which is a longer distance, you can use the gas. So you you have in you know you have range like a regular gas engine, but when you're in within I think a hundred miles, you can just use electricity. I, it's so cool. Ford is really doubling down on technology, and I just love that. And one of the things that the new Fusion has, the new Focus has, in fact, all it's available in all new Ford vehicles, is Sync. I've talked so much about Sync, and it's one thing I will not get a car now that does not have Ford Sync in it. I love it in my Mustang. I get in the car. I have already. You can you can use Bluetooth. You could you can listen to entertainment on almost any device. If it, you could voice control the music via Bluetooth on the smartphone. So I use my iPhone 5, works great with an iPhone 5. But you can also, and I got a lightning cable so I can, every Ford vehicle with Sync or my Ford Touch has one or sometimes two USB ports that charge and they attach to the Sync. So when you plug in your iPhone 5 to the USB port via the lightning cable, now it's it knows all the songs on my eye. I can, I can navigate by genre, you know, I could say, Play uh, my rock and roll, and it will play classic rock or whatever. I could say, play this playlist. Play the Sarah Lane playlist. I could say, play uh, Madonna's Beautiful Stranger, and it will play that. Or I can even, this is cool, I'm listening to a song I like. I say, play similar music, and it will play similar music. It will play uh, apps from your smartphone, Pandora, Stitcher, uh, via Bluetooth streaming or via USB. You could even plug in a thumb drive, a USB thumb drive with MP3s on it, and it could... It would, it would index it, and you could play by voice. I love this, too. If you have available sync with My4 Touch and HD radio, you can use iTunes tagging. And so what it'll do is as you're listening to the HD radio, there's my Mustang, by the way. Mine's in red, but it's very similar. Uh, you're listening to your HD radio. You say, I like this song. It will tag it on your iPod or iPhone. And when you get back to your house, iTunes will help you buy it. Sync is amazing, and the whole idea of all this beautiful technology, very sophisticated stuff, is very simple. Safety. Keep your eyes on the road, your hands on the wheel, but still let you listen to your music or your podcast or whatever. You've got to test drive for a Sync at a Ford dealer near you. Actually, pick a car and then get in the car and test drive the Sync, too. Uh, go further in a Ford or visit Ford.com slash technology to find out more. Really awesome stuff and i'm getting more and more you know i, I mentioned a, a few shows ago uh i don't know if it was on ipad today i think it was on twit that um uh i was getting a lot of people sending me email and tweeting that they were buying fords because of what they'd heard over the years about us talking about fords and i'm getting so many tweets now people saying yeah me too me too i bought a ford for sync so it really is a selling point it's interesting 
Moving on. Thanks, Ford. Thank hey, you, so Ford. We got. We have so much viewer feedback. Let's get through some uh, more because it applies to all of us. Okay. Jared says, he writes in an email, how do you guys manage backing up apps? Uh, you do back up apps, don't you? Of course, Jared, we do. Says, if your favorite app is no longer in the store for download, third-party API, etc., all that stuff, Apple can just pull an app anytime it wants to, or an app can say, me. we elect, elect to remove mm -hmm. our app from the app store, news.me. So for a number of reasons. Uh, so the solution, of course, is to back up. But how do you manage this? And updates to the app, if they're available, when they are. Um, my, my short answer is iCloud. I back up everything to Via iCloud. Via Wi-Fi? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to ever hook it up to a machine. Everything's backed up. Yeah. yeah. I know that there are people who say, well, if, if Apple could remove an app from the App Store and Apple controls their cloud, could they remove that app from the cloud if they could disable it on my device? And In the answer theory. is... Maybe, yes. They have a kill switch. But I'm the, not too worried they've never about used that, that, though. They've never used that. The, the, all, I think they would use it for malware. I don't think they would use it just to say that app is, is gone from the store, so we're going to pull it off your machine. Yeah. That would be, I don't think they would go that far. But for, for, for malware, they, they have that kill switch, too. But then again, if you, if you want to uh, back it up to your, uh, back up all, all your apps to your computer. If that's... you sync with iTunes and you have it make a backup, you can back up that backup and you will always have it. And you can always restore from it. Mm -hmm. So Apple cannot delete it at that point. No, it belongs to you. It belongs it's local. To you. There is an issue because you would then never get your iPhone iPad online again because you'd have to, because if Apple had like a lasting kill order, then anytime you got online with the iPad, it would kill it. Mm hmm So you'd have to take, it's not worth it. Is what I'm saying. I just, yeah, I don't. I, I feel like, yeah. I mean, you're backing up your apps. Um, you, if there's an app that Apple kills in the future, pulls, uh, tries to get uh, not running on people's machines, yeah, it would seem like you'll it would have to be howls. something, yeah, or or something wrong with the app where you're glad you're glad to be rid of it because you can, it's, I don't know. You can apparently kill the kill switch after a jailbreak. I'm told. Probably. So it, like, if you, it's just a lot of work to go to. Not to have an app delete. You know where I'm more concerned about, and this happened Fiction with Amazon Mike. with Mike's. the Kindle, is the is the woman in Norway whose uh, Amazon account was deleted and all the content on her Kindle was deleted, and she couldn't get it back. And Amazon wouldn't told her tell her why. And she had many many books. Mm -hmm. That's more of a concern: iBooks being deleted or apps being deleted. And 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 it's important to understand when you look at the terms of service, you don't own any of that stuff. You just have a right to use it. And that's how Apple uh, and uh, publishers get around that idea. They say, look, you didn't buy this. It's not like a physical book that you bought. You're only kind of renting it. So sort of, sort of a similar story came from Pearson Brown. Um, this is in regards to something iTunes related. Pearson says, I'm a Brit. I currently live in France. I needed to get some iPad apps from the French app store, but I couldn't do this because I was registered with the UK app store. No problem, I thought. All I had to do was go to the settings, user identity, and then change my country setting. But when I tried to do this, I got an error message saying, I can't actually change my country because I'm a subscriber to iTunes Match, and I have to cancel that before I continue but there's not really an easy way to cancel your match subscription. I looked at the internet, I, fa I found other people with similar problems, so I discovered that the only way to actually cancel iTunes Match was to contact iTunes support, so I did. I got an email back saying, oh, okay, you, okay, do you realize what the consequences are if you actually cancel your account? Do you want to confirm the cancellation? I said yes. Then I got another mail back saying, it was impossible to cancel match. And here's what the mail said. Thank you for your additional mail. Due to the age of this subscription, I am unable to cancel iTunes match at this time. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause you and wish there was more I could do to assist you. I even tried to override the system and process the cancellation for you, but regrettably, our system will not allow us to process this request. Pearson says, this is absurd. No, Apple's this is saying Skynet. that I have to cancel my subscription <laughs> to change countries, and then support is saying it's not ab able to do this. What's up? You said it's Skynet. <laughs> Skynet. Why is it, it Skynet? The, the, it wouldn't be. I, I I presume that what he's trying to do is preserve his existing applications and get this new French application. I mean, all you'd have to do right that's, is reset right. reset the iPad and say it's a brand new iPad, and then sign up as a Frenchie. And you're fine. But then you lose everything you've ever bought on the yeah, other side, which he's going to lose anyway when you delete. I don't think this is what, for one app, 
This is what you want to do, really? Well, what if there's an app that's in the French app store that you just can't get anywhere else and you really want it? He lives in France. This might really apply to him. Mm. I agree that yeah, sometimes, you know, the, we, we get this on iPad Today a lot where I will sometimes say, this is a really great app, everyone should download it. And someone in Sweden says, it's not in the Sweden iTunes store. That sucks. And I go, ah, I don't think true. he's going to get the result, even if he were able to cancel Match. I may be wrong, but even if you were able to cancel Match, I don't think you'd be able to then say, oh, now I'm, now I'm French, buy that app and maintain the, There's issues going on with cross-country licensing. But this is what happened with the woman in Norway, by the way. Uh -huh. We don't know, but Cory Doctorow thinks the reason that Amazon... She was buying her books in the UK, and she lived in Norway. And there's this thing called open territory. You know, books are licensed, and I think this might be true of other content, are licensed by country, right? So if you want Harry Potter in the US, you're licensing it from Scholastic. If you want Harry Potter in the UK, you're licensing it from Penguin. But if you're in Norway, there's nobody has a license. So you could buy either, but the way Amazon handles is you can't buy it either. You can't buy any because we don't have a deal in Norway. And I suspect the same thing is going on. You're establishing your iPad as being a UK iPad. And at that point, you have rights to only UK content, period, across the board. Well, I just think that's a little bit silly. Apple makes a big deal about being a company that uh, supports the global marketplace. People move. England and France are not that far away from each other. I don't think it's beyond huh? the realm of possibility I, that you I would relocate corrected. to France. I stand corrected. Radio, uh, somebody in the chat room, I can't see the name, Radio Cloud, I think it was, says that he has three accounts in three different countries and he can, he can buy uh, in each country. He can buy uh, apps. So I stand corrected. I guess you could do it that. Has, maybe it has something to do with iTunes Match. If you've got iTunes it Match, is, it's match that's associated oh, with... Oh, you know why? Content. Match is about content. So that's exactly why. Now, his question, well, because they say they have an old copy of Match and that they, they mm -hmm. don't have the way to do Well, they just don't, they didn't build that into the system. You're just kind of stuck. But that's why. It's because Match, because you have, you, you have UK music in your Match store, you can now no longer go somewhere else. They would violate the licensing agreement. Well, that's, that's why. Well, still very annoying. I am on Pearson's side here. That's, that sucks. Okay, I am sorry. so here's what you need to do. According to, again, JP2E in the chat room, sign up for a French iTunes account with a different email, sign out of iTunes on your iPad, sign back in on the iPad with a new iTunes account, and you should be able to do it. Well, she's but, from London, so she knows. But see, the match, issue, the match issue to me is the biggest issue because you have music that is licensed to one country. They won't let you... Well, and match is great, but it's a little strange that Apple says... Why can't he just sign out of his account? Because that he was trying to cancel that stuff account, right? is now local if he's downloaded. Change country because I was a subscriber to Match, and then I had to cancel Match. Yeah, it has to do with uh, rights, music rights, absolutely, international music rights. But now he can't cancel Match. Like he can't just say. Yeah, okay, because fine, for I'll some over. reason their computer system doesn't let him cancel old yeah. subscriptions. They're like, no one's ever wanted to do this before. We don't know how to help you. Hey, we got another email from. I don't know who it's from. Sorry, I forgot your name. But you're um, a uh, dad. That much I do know. The dad says, Today I changed the password on my iPad. Just something that I figure I should do every once in a while. I agree. My three-year-old son, though, had memorized the previous <laughs> security code because he'd <laughs> seen me do it enough. And, you know, I left him with the iPad and he decided to go looking for games to play. But the password was different. We'll get this. I remembered seeing in the settings sometime back that there's an option to reset or reformat the iPad after 10 attempts. I didn't want this, of course, right. because I knew that my three-year-old might try, try 10 times. Again. Yeah. So I went ahead and disabled that. But what I didn't know is that even if you disable that and somebody tries 10 times unsuccessfully, it will disable your iPad for 60 minutes. He says, now I'm sitting here writing to you and I can't log into my iPad. And then he wrote, growl. How frustrating is that? So frustrating. If you're... I didn't know that. There would be situations, sometimes I'm just, I don't know, stupid about passwords. Sometimes I'm drunk at the airport. Yeah. And I want my iPad or else I'm just going to cry. I think it's 40. And if I've got an hour to kill and I've, all of a sudden I lock myself out of my iPad. That would be really frustrating. So it so does that after 10 attempts regardless of the settings? You can you can say, please don't reformat this thing. I yeah. just might, you know, forget. But it will lock you out. But it'll lock you out for an hour. This has never happened to me. I've, I've, I've got to go on what our friend here is saying. That. You don't want to do that. Can we get through the show first okay. before you lock yourself out of it? Thank you. 
Uh, That's what would happen to me. I'd be sitting there. Uh, I can't use the iPad because it uh, got locked down. Yeah. Whoops. That sorry. We have to stop the show. I can't use my iPad. Can we come back in an hour? No. Yeah. I, I mean, you barely remember to bring it half the time. And we do this every week. It's actually, uh, what, episode is, 121? This is not mine. It wasn't that I didn't remember. I thought it was here. But that's not remembering. Where it is. It's floating around. You didn't around. remember where it was because no you thought it was here, but is. you were wrong. That's yeah. kind of how how the minds work. Uh, reminder that we love hearing from all of you. Please do email us, iPadToday at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail. Um, some of the voicemails sometimes are so great, but they're like two minutes long. Can't and use they just, yeah, Can't just, use it's, a, it's a little bit too long. So 30 seconds or less is like a real sweet spot. 757 504 IPAD. That's 757 504 4723. Or you can always send us a video, upload it somewhere, send us the link, email uh, us the link at iPad Today at twit.tv. We will watch it, we will clap, and maybe we will put it in a future show because it's always fun to see all of you smiling back at us. Or you can frown because sometimes face. life is hard and that's cool. You could sob even kind of bring down the show, but I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna say so I hear the, don't cry and I send hear us a you video. were at a baseball game. <gasps> Was I ever Leo game one of the World Series, Giants versus the Detroit Tigers, and we killed them. They did a neat thing. They had uh, the American flag, but it was in the shape of America. I've yeah. never seen that before. That was pretty neat. Yeah. Giant on the field with people holding it. It was actually a funny game because even though sometimes you go to games that are televised, so there's like certain breaks. This is a World Series game, there's obviously, so there's a lot, av yeah. a lot of uh, advertising and stuff yeah. like that, So, which was great because you have more time to go get beer, <laughs> but it was the, like, the, the, the cadence of the game was Felt, a little interesting. I uh, had never been to a World Series game in my life. It's exciting. I have. Yeah. It's really exciting. It's so exciting. I'm so glad I mean, you I'm, to I'm excited because, of course, now, my team is in the World Series, you, but... You were at AT&T Park. Yes. And they have Wi-Fi everywhere. And actually, they have really good Wi-Fi. Yeah. Because it's ATT. They want to show off their Wi-Fi. That's their whole thing. Did you bring your uh, iPad? I didn't. But you See, know you why, should have. You know why I'm stupid? Is you... that there were a couple calls, you know, where it's like, he looked safe. Mm -hmm. And they won't show that on, mm -mm. The, on the Jumbotron because they don't want the crowd to get upset and start fighting each other. You should have brought your iPad and Slingbox. That's for instant replays. That's what I. That's what I need. And I got to tell you, you got to have the Slingbox because I, this made me a little bit mad, but MLB at bat? Because Fox owns the rights to the National League playoffs and the World Series, there's no MLB at bat video. Yeah. That's how I was watching the previous stuff. Yeah, it got blacked out. Got blacked out. So thank goodness I have a slingbox at home. Not just a slingbox. I've got the new slingbox at home. Got that hooked up to my satellite. You could hook it up. Or actually, I have a cable which you could hook up to a satellite, DVR, uh, Blu-ray player, whatever you've got, you hook it all up. And Slingbox is so cool. Then you hook up to the internet. Now you have password-protected access to your home theater setup. So you can watch the game, you can de you can set your, your DVR, you can play back your DVR. You have absolute control, and these new sling boxes are so sweet. Look at that, it looks like Frank Gehry designed that sling box, 500. Full HD 1080p, HDMI connectivity now, Wi-Fi built in, which makes it very easy on this sling box 500 to hook it up, because you know often I don't have an ethernet next to my TV, so it's really handy to have that. Uh, with Slingbox, you're actually watching your home TV. So anything you could see at home, including the ball game, you can watch on your mobile device. That's one big use for Slingbox. Take it to the ball game and watch the broadcast when they won't show those replays on, uh, <laughs> on the Jumbotron. But you can also do it if, man, you know, you're at the World Series, but you had a previous... Who knew the Giants were going to be in the World Series? We didn't plan that far ahead. Maybe you have to go to a wedding or a dinner or something. Bring your iPad or your iPhone or your Android tablet or your laptop with you, and you can watch your home theater set up using Slingbox with great picture quality in a restaurant in the backyard at the ball game. And you're not paying anything extra, you know, no monthly fees because you're already paying for your TV setup. I want you to try Slingbox right now. They've got it at Best Buy. Amazon has it. Fry's has it. Or you could check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. The brand new Slingbox with built-in Wi-Fi, HDMI, full High def 1080p. Of course, you have to have the internet to do it. But it's, a, but you know, it's, sling, we've used Slingbox. Slingbox does such a good job of compressing. We've used Slingbox as our uplink from CES. We had a Slingbox at that at each end, and we sent the stream. That's how we did the CES connectivity for the first few years via Slingbox. It's amazing. Slingbox.com/slash Twit. Give it a try.
today. You got a nice hat on. Well, Leo, I felt like this hat, this is not new to Twix, but it felt very appropriate today because That's last panda, night- That's panda, baby. This is, pan, this is, I mean, it's a panda hat. If you like pandas, you'd probably like this hat, but also Pablo Sandoval of Giants fame, who hit three home runs last night, count him three. So there's Babe His Ruth. His nickname is Panda. There's so Mr. October, Reggie wear? Jackson, mm -hmm. Albert Pujols, and, and now Pablo Sandoval, Panda, only people ever hit three home runs in a World Series game. That must have been, he's not even a big home run hitter. That must have been an amazing thing to see him boom, 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 out of the park. And you were sitting right there. Did the ball hit you? No. No. Because I, that would have been a foul ball. Oh, you were I in the field. I wasn't in the bleachers. Oh. Uh, no, I, this, it was super exciting. That's so neat. A lot of fun. Oh my gosh. So jealous I you mean, were there. And I, I apologize to Cardinals fans. To uh, I really apologize, apologize to Nationals fans in advance to Tigers fans, <laughs> and I'm going to apologize in about three games to Tigers fans. There you go. Tom has a there, very small head. Well, it's your brain is big. Just tell yourself that you just got a this, big old brain. I You're so this. smart. Tom has to wear this because he lost a bet, right? Here's the thing. Yeah, he and Ryan Block of Gadget Fame. Yeah. Uh, they made a bet that if the Cardinals won, Ryan would wear a Cardinals hat for a week. And if the Giants won, Tom would wear a Giants hat. Oopsies. But Tom likes the Giants, oh, so he's like, "Oh, it's this not is that fine. bad, huh?" But he didn't say that. He did not. Uh, he did not fully disclose how ambivalent he was about the whole thing. So he's like, "Yeah, it's fine. I'm rooting for them." Mm. Anyway, know your bets. That is the moral of this uh, episode of iPad today. So, are you going to any more World Series games, or is that it? I don't know. I mean. I feel like one was should. exciting enough. That may be, by the way, that uh, who knows what's going to happen in the World Series, but that may be the highlight of the year. Well, I think that that's the, a very pessimistic attitude is what I think. The only game that will be better is when they will win the World Series. Right. Well, here's the thing. All they have to do is win tonight, and then we force the series to come back to San Francisco. Uh, I, I so would like that. So that's all I want. All I, I, I want like is win tonight, and then win, win, win again. They'll win one I, I think yeah. Detroit's gone through such rough times. I hope... I. I hate to root against the Tigers. Don't make it about the city. Make it about the team, and we're bloodthirsty. Okay. Actually, I, I agree with you. Detroit is very nice. I have oh, no problem yeah. with them. Oh, but have... this is not what the App Cap Awards are about. It's not about baseball, unless, of course, we're talking about baseball apps, and we've kind of already done that for I'm the not season. talking about baseball. I'm not talking about baseball either. I'm talking about faking it. Our favorite app of the week is is faking it? Well, that's what it's called. It's called faking it, and it's not what you think. It's a different kind of faking it. This is actually made by the Metropolitan Museum. Um, and Whoa. what's cool is that that's kind of creepy. These are photos. I'm going to go ahead and play this little intro to give you like a little bit of a sense of what's going on here. These are photos that are taken over time that have been manipulated for various reasons, like uh. before the invention of Photoshop, right? So there are photos in, you know, history. Famous photos. That have been changed, yeah. They to, put Ulysses S. Grant to in the picture. To rewrite history. Yeah. All sorts of, all sorts of cool stuff. So the idea behind this app is, it's a little, it's a little bit of like an educational thing. Like, Elvis, they put hair on him. Well, they took hair off of him oh. because he was a GI. Right. And they wanted to make it look like, look, we've got a picture of him. I see. While he was, you know, in the service type stuff. That woman is not a kitty cat. He's not, she's not actually half cat. Those were two images that were put together. So, we, so we obviously those are manipulated, so let's see. Yeah, so, okay, so for example, which one do we wanna, do we wanna click on the Elvis one? So that's the, yeah, the, you know, you could tell it's a fake on the right, you, you could tell. You can, because you're looking at both of them. Yeah. But keep in mind, when this, when this picture was first, I don't know if it was in a newspaper or something like that, I mean, well, actually, let's look at the Why info. Why are they I putting get a... lipstick on Because <laughs> yeah, he's a very vain man. <laughs> it's a strange But here's picture. the story. So I go like, well, okay, I, they probably wanted to show that he was in the military That's or something neat. like that. Yeah, yeah, because he got to get a crew cut when he was in the army. And then you get um, a story behind, why did they do this? Why did this happen? So it's part of like a wow, you know, spot the fake type of a thing and part uh, informative about our history, right? right. So that's Elvis. Um, you can look at a couple others. Oh, this one's kind of cool. Like, whoa, neat, hey, how they do that? So oh, the these famous are, Salvador Dali picture, yeah. These are a, a, a variety of pictures, so you can zoom into them and scroll around, and like, it's like, was that real? I mean, this I is- I think it's pretty obviously faked. Yeah, but how, but right? But how, yeah. Yeah, so 
This is um, this is a, a, a description of how the artist Philippe Halsman uh, uh, created the photo, and obviously it's a it's a group of photos that are put together. Sorry, this camera seems to be auto focusing, and so it's like really out of focus right now. Sorry, everybody who's looking at this. The I picture, assure you, the picture looks good. It's not blurry um, in real life. No. Uh, and and yeah, and so on. And then you can like take a quiz, and then you can uh, decide if you are. Uh, smart enough about apps to know if something is actually um, like what what was altered here. Okay, so the the quiz is there's a horse or a rider in a background. That's that's different. Angle of the man's hat that must be wrong. Number of tents. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say the angle of the man's hat doesn't I'm really say make a lot of sense to me. Added. I would say tents too. Because that's what you would want to add. Who cares about the angle? Oh, no. well, we're wrong. Okay, well I'd say. Horse, horse rider in background? Okay, yeah, so oh. that's correct. And then it gives us the story about why this is incorrect. Three separate photographs. Yeah. Together. And then you've got the original photograph that you can look at. they had to do that optically. They didn't have Photoshop. That's, uh, you know, Ulysses Grant at City Point in 1902. Yeah. I'm a sucker for old photographs in general. I just like this stuff, even if there was no sort of quiz element. That's but it's neat. always nice to know that people were faking things way back when to try to make the story cater a little bit more to what they wanted to tell me. It's interesting. So. Beatmaster's saying in the chat room that the terms used in Photoshop, like, like layers and masks, refer back to the kind of optical manipulation people were doing in, in those uh, photos. So it's... There's kind of a continuity. It's interesting that you picked that because my pick is also a photography pick. No yeah. way. And I'm really glad I was. Re I've been. I wanted to pick this a couple of weeks ago, and I'm glad that uh, Scott did not pick this. It's called Photo Smith. Now, uh, we've talked about iPhoto, and for most people, iPhoto is a great choice. But if you are a Lightroom user on the desktop, you might want to take a look at Photo Smith. The idea is that the two work together for photographers uh, in their workflow. There's a Photo Smith plug-in for Lightroom, so you can take your Lightroom pictures and put them in Photosmith or vice versa. You can, I have to say the user interface is a little bit more sensible uh, than uh, uh, iPhoto, but it, you know, it has, a, and it has a loop, it has a grid, but it's not so much for modifying photos as it is for going through them and picking them. So the iPad, especially the Retina iPads, are really a great way to look at your pictures Decide which ones you like, which ones you don't like. It's something you do in Lightroom all the time. Mm -hmm. And this, because it syncs with Lightroom, can go back and forth and uh, do that. It also supports, besides Lightroom, Dropbox, Facebook, Flickr. You can email or create iPad uh, albums. It also supports the iFi, which is that great little SD card that has Wi-Fi uh, built into it. You can do all the tagging. Uh, I have to say, this is uh, not something... Pro it's kind of expensive. It's, what is it, $20? Yeah, yeah. It's $20. It's not, it's not the kind of thing that you would probably want to buy if you weren't a pro photographer or used Lightroom regularly. But very, this is exactly what I've been looking for because the problem with iPhoto is it doesn't support RAW. Mm -hmm. uh, if you import using the camera connection kit, in fact, I don't even know what happens now with these new uh, lightning connectors. I guess they've got a new SD card reader uh, for lightning. I guess I'll have to buy that. But if you're importing from a camera with a camera connection kit, It'll import JPEGs, not RAWs. It'll impact the th import the thumbnails if JPEGs weren't made. This one is what you want, which is it preserves the high quality image, lets you look at the image, figure out which ones you want, and then when it talks back to a Lightroom, you're gonna be using the highest quality image available. I, uh, I think this is an excellent, uh, not, not for editing, uh, but for, for examining photos, for taking a look. Here we are in Norway, on the, on the Herta Grute. Herta Grute, Herta Grute. You never did do that, did you? Well, I, it doesn't mean I'm not going to. I just went to France and drank wine instead. Um, that's what I did <laughs> in 2012. So no, it was really quite nice. Here's but I will make it to the Hurt Garden uh, the her, her. eventually. Her, her. Ask Lisa about it before you go on. I just, oh. yeah, she already told me. A word of warning. She, she, she let me know <laughs> about Not a fan of the Hurt Yeah, well, she's, you know, so I, here's think, all the I think I'm a little do. bit of an adventure traveler. I think I'd be okay about it. I had a great time, yeah. even even though it rolled me out of the bed because the boat was going like this. But it's the fjords. You can't knock the fjords. The fjords, I think, is oh, how is that you, how you pronounce, pronounce it. it? Yeah, because there's a J in it. Fjord. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, Photosmith, $20, kind of a specialty app, but I know a lot of you use Lightroom, and it is a great solution to, to combine the iPad as a viewer uh -huh. with Lightroom on your desktop. Now, see, okay, this here's a good question for you. I agree. This looks awesome. And anybody who uses Lightroom knows that 
I mean, it's, if you're if you're at the pro level, raw image is very important. Yeah. iPhoto does so much stuff well. I use iPhoto. I love I'm iPhoto. Fine with it. And I was but crazy about it. But if you're serious, then this is this well, is you, the serious app for you. You can still use iPhoto if you want. I mean, it, can, it, it integrates. It reads your camera roll or your cloud. Your uh, what do they call it? The uh, Photo stream uh -huh. uh, as well as Lightroom, so it's not like it's it's in its own world. It's still, you can still use iPhoto, but I love the ability to sync back to the desktop in high quality. Here's That's what I here's my question for you before we sign off for the show. Yes, ma'am. With the iPad Mini, is this still as compelling as an app? We might have we might so, so in future shows when we now have the Mini and the regular Retina iPad, that might be a conversation that we have to bring up every once in a while. Is like, is this Mini quality? Well, it would certainly work on the mini. It'll work. But, but, and I guess if a photographer, you know, look, photographers are using those little photo wallets with even smaller screens. So the idea of having something portable that you can examine your photos that's bigger than your camera is still a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I think this is really best on a third or fourth generation iPad where you have a retina display and you can really see what your photos look like. Everything that's where it's good. really great. Yeah. So something to keep in mind. Yeah. By the way, if you guys have ideas for how we can... I don't know, section out certain mini discussions or apps or that sort of thing. Let us know. Uh, we'll, you know, we're just sort of just working it out as we go along because we never really know what Apple's going to announce. So the show will morph and grow and evolve um, with your help. So thanks everybody who watched this week. Leo, you'll be back next week as well. You've got another week. I will before, be here. Before you go away. I am leaving, a, uh, the flight leaves a week from Sunday. Uh, and then it arrives like sometime, like Thursday. It's like a four-day flight. That's not true. It actually arrives Tuesday. That's a long flight. It's a, well, it's only a 14-hour flight, but you know, there's a big time change. Yeah. There's international dateline. And oh, it's, it's going to be so it's fun. It's also complicated and Are scientific. you flying Qantas? That's nope. a nice airline. Yeah, no. Oh, some, some you know, other I'm airline. A little, I'm a little bummed because uh, it was $10,000 for a business class flight to Australia. So I'm not, I'm going to be sitting in like this with the nine-year-old. Oh, you know, it's it's how you uh, a long time. It's how you connect. You're an adventure traveler, you aren't you? You connect with the little people. I don't fly business class. Wouldn't that be nice? It is I very start, nice on a I, long flight. I mean, flight. I've, I've flown business class in my life, never internationally. I'm just not a I'm not a it's baller. It's not worth it. it I, I can't don't do, do it. That. I don't do it on a uh, you know cross country flight. It's not worth it. But if you're flying 20 hours, being able to go like this. Oh, oh, is don't very get nice. me wrong. That sounds awesome. But ten thousand dollars, come but on. I have been buying. Really great stuff from Sky Mall. I have a giant pillow oh, that I can great. lean on. Thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of iPad Today. It's been great having you. See you next Head week massager. right here. Same time, same. Actually, it's not going to. It's going to be regular time next week for yes. live viewers. Same place for sure. Living room set. That's where we hang. 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Until next time. Ow. Oh, is this where we howl? Yes. Ow. 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 He's out. Go and play. Bye.